came out earlier in the week about how red side had taken priority and had a lot of wins um i'm expecting after a, another week of play that it's actually gonna begin to level out because blue side was down to like 44 percent win rate which i don't buy into particularly but it's always interesting to see but a massive shift to be fair stress yeah. whenever we think one side is good you know right. to love do always seem to when we thought blue side and first pick was the strongest thing on the face yeah. of the planet uh, Unicorns of Love, they were on red side. That's very true. Game, and they were making it work. So I feel like this is the team who, who's not concerned for your statistics. Stress. No, I know, right? They I, like what is, they like. This is a team that I could very well first pick Talon in this game just so that Origin don't take it away. I don't think they're going to do that. That's not my professional opinion. And if, if they did, <laughs> forget my excuses over the last couple of seconds. To be clear, ladies and gentlemen, that was a meme. It was not intended uh, as... Analysis. Of course, Rengar taken on the board by Origin. Don't want to get into the hands, Cersei. But Rumble will be picked up. Huh. Potentially a flex pick yep. on the side of Unicorns of Love, however, may just go into the top lane hands of Visit Chachi. It was Unicorns of Love who banned this last time around. What should be a bait that they're making Origin pick Nah, and then they're gonna pick Aurelia into it? Or something silly like that. Like watch Unicorns be right in the head of Origin here because there's not too many matchups that do well into the Rumble. We're flexing the Rumble, we're flexing the Nautilus, which means maybe it'll be jungle pick. Uh, Rengar is not available. Maybe this will be, yep, yeah, yeah, an early I game. Like I like it, See, I, I like, like it. it. Early game, we talked about it. This is an early game playmaker. It's got the kick, it can start plays at any time. Now it's not the Gragas, but the Gragas was of course taken away, but you got Death Charge, you've got the Insect, you've got some guaranteed fight setups coming through here. Unicorns of Love, however, they liked the Warwick. Yeah. They want to run it back. Now, uh, you know, Deficio said, this is this was risky. He said, we they don't ha quite have the, the differences in damage types. But this time around, they have that rumble. Yeah. They, now they have that magic damage to come in. Yeah, they're now rounding that out on their comp. I think Chachi also just wanted to do more in the game, wanted to be part of the carry potential coming out of this. I mean, Unicorns of Love, yes, it's risky, but you look at how far ahead they are and how they played out the first game. You can't really... Uh, you know, put them down for having that confidence to go, okay, we're game one, let's just do it again, game two. Now they do opt to pick up the Ash here. It was banned away in the second rotation by Unicorns of Love when they already had that Kaelin. So a little bit of shift in priority here. OG getting a few more comfort picks under their belt. And I like Ash into Kaelin. I mean, it's not necessarily a winning lane as such, but does very well. You have that utility as well going later into the game to start fights, and that gives Tabs a good impact on the game. We've seen him have impact on Varus, on Ash, when he can make those decisive calls. For now, though, it's going to be a lot about shutting down what we saw in the previous game. No Karma for X Peke. No Talon coming in for Exile. Oh. I almost said Knight. I'm so used to seeing Knight play Talon, <laughs> I just assume it's Knight every time. But Exile with a wicked Talon of his own. And this, I mean, at this stage, do you think we're going to continue to see Unicorns of Love kind of draft creatively, or is it going to be a pretty standard closeout to these compositions? I think if Origin go the Orianna again here, I think Unicorns might pick something a little funky around it. I think is like Orianna, you can pick almost anything into, uh, but that would, of course, give away their uh, flexibility on counterpicking their mid laner. Very true. Well, Xpeke, his new choice of support with Lulu, with Karma, taking off the table is the Tom Kench, so can save his team from some of those early aggressive situations, if that's what Unicorns of Love look to do. Can also make those rotations if OG can be that team uh, that can outmaneuver in the yeah. macro game. Sadly, this probably means no Katarina. Because there's a Tom Kench. Tom Kench very good at saving that first target. So Cat just jumps in, does nothing after that. All right. I'm Here really we go. Oh, okay. This is fine. Like, this is, see, this is the thing. I, I, I feel like range supports ruined bottom lane because all they want to <laughs> do is push and trade. See, melee supports, you fight. When you go in, you fight because you don't have range. You don't have a way to get out of the fight. Tom Kench. Tarek, there's no gap closers here. You go in, you go in. So I like this from both sides. We are going to see an aggressive bottom lane stress. Yeah. I am ready. This is going to be Caitlyn hitting people. This is going to be Tarek <laughs> trying to stun people. Nads are casted in alongside it. We talked about Risky. Now we're going like a little bit less wave clear from mid lane, a little bit more heavy snowball. Exile's like, okay, Talon snowballs well. Give me seven kills on Cassidy and I'll show you what I can okay. do. Okay, not quite as strong in the early game, but I like this from Unicorns of Love. One thing you should always look out for when you're watching a Unicorns of Love game is like small champion synergies, whether it's the Caitlyn Thresh, the Bard Thresh, but you got Tarek, Cassidy, 
you're just giving Cassidy in CC. <laughs> when he leaps in, you just attack a stun onto him. Also, though, they did just blind pick Cassidy with like Jace and other champions that can do well. Like Cassidy into ranged matchups does get punished heavily pre six because Cassidy can't step forward. Uh, generally, against magic damage matchups, he does better because of his shield. Against Jace, like Jace is going to walk up to the lane and Exile is going to be like, oh, I can't farm. And with these okay. compositions rounded out, I, I mean, Nahian, this is a comfort pick for him. He's shown pretty strong games on Jace. Yep. He obviously hasn't been the win-defining pick, but it's definitely been something comfortable for him. We've seen him have pretty large impact on this pick overall. I feel like this is a slightly l more disrespectful draft out of the Unicorns of Love in game two, now blind picking Cassidy. And as he said, a comfort pick on the Jason. I, I actually like Origins comp somewhat. You've got the Lee Sin for the early game presence. Jace will have control of the mid lane. Nautilus, while he won't win the lane against Rumble, can still have that impact. I, I want to see what Origin can do if they don't give Exile seven kills before 17 minutes. Very true. Uh, don't think we're going to see seven kills again. Seems unlikely. Feels like OG will adapt coming into this game. They have picked a new composition. They have set themselves a little bit up uh, for success here in the early game with the Lee Sin, with strong, aggressive picks like the Jace. But if you have faith in OG, there's some XPK fans here. If you have faith in XPK, hashtag OG win. If they can bring it back, if they can make it a series, if they can show what that promotion tournament prep is going to look like. On the other side, I think it's going to be the quick, the clean 2 0 for the Unicorns of Love. Hashtag UOL win at LO Esports on Twitter. Now's the time, folks. Every vote counts. <laughs> Is this like a, a telethon Look, where you're I, like, dial it in, donate Look, now? Between Brexit and Trump being president, I think it's important that people vote, Stress. <laughs> I think we have to teach <laughs> the children that it's important it's to soon. vote. It's too soon. Way, way too soon. Not too soon, however, for game two. Unicorns Love this time taking it up on the blue side. OG on the red. They got some comfort picks. They've got some flashy picks. And maybe it'll be just as uh, as violent as the previous game. <laughs> maybe. 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 Um... That's my analysis. Maybe. I'm not it's sure. Like it's hard committing to the, <laughs> to the maybe. I might do that with all of my analysis from now on and just kind I of think throw it out there and be, be like, hmm. A Blade of the Room King build. Ooh, but I'm not sure, so I'm gonna give it a maybe. Give it a maybe. Um, I could be followed up with a back cleaver, who knows? Might be. It's like a maybe, but I mean, slightly who, who really knows? It's up to tabs, right? Like, we have no guarantees. I mean, it's tabs, uh, it's not steel lack, otherwise it'd be like QSS first on everything. Or, uh, come on, man. He can't, he's, I feel like he's lived that down enough. He had a theory, it might have been a little wrong. Not I mean, sure. Come on, it, like the meme is, if you're talking AD carry builds, yeah, it's either fair. like Genja or now like Steelback. Those are the two players you've got to talk about with their <laughs> wacky builds. Genja ends up being right like yeah, years before, there's not a Reddit before, thread by the right? end of the day about <laughs> Blade of the Rune King, Black Cleaver, Runeans, and Genja being right. He probably played it. I would it. be stunned. He probably Genja played probably it. played it like in 2012. I don't even, Blade of the Rune King wasn't even an item then, but he probably played it. Probably did. Prolific AD carry player. See. I like that Samix and Hill saying are doing this in the bottom lane, but the fact that they didn't dance with tabs feels a little disrespectful. Oh, that's good damage, damage coming in. I mean, is that indicative? Do you think Samix and Hill saying would just be off at the side in the club, just not talking? Is that what's happening? Tabs? Is there like cutting shapes? Look, I mean that'd be cool. Don't get me wrong. I would instantly gain respect for an LCS player, good or bad, if he could dance <laughs> really well. So. Uh, if you're looking to get into the LCS and you dance very well, I will give you my uh, my vote of approval if you can bust a move. For now, however, OG uh, taking the back end of, of some trades here. The pressure definitely moving in the favor of Unicorns of Love. And for things in the mid lane, it looks even despite the range advantage Jace has. Ooh. And top lane even as well, but Syncroft. Maybe hoping to make a difference. I mean, Exile knows, though, he's conceding so much here because he just wants it to come under the tower. Just wants to clean up that CS, get to six. Once he's hit six, everything's fine. He's got TP. He can be wherever he wants on the map, and nobody from Origin can really contend. So for Exile, it's just a waiting game, a patient game. Maybe we'll see Zerse visit the lane, but I'm not actually expecting it. They've just spotted him out, oh, no. so Nathan can play around it. Well, now he takes out the buff. It is going to be Lee Sin moving to his own blue buff, making it secure. Do not want to get triple buffed here. 
But both junglers now on the bottom side of the map. Syncroft well aware. Uh, we're going to pick up his blue before he makes anything happen. And for now, it is just the farm game. But that's good. That's what the Warwick wants. Wants to get that level six. Yeah, wants to hit it. As does uh, Exile wants to get six. Both of them kind of jump in together. Everything ends up OK. So unicorns on the slower early game. We haven't seen a level three kill yet. There's nothing going on like that. Chachi's just going to shove out mid lane, uh, as always happens with a rumble versus any Top lane, tank. what do you mean? Uh, yeah, top oh, lane. exile. Ooh, magic damage shield, flash out. Good start for Nahion. Yeah. Important start as well, because now that that flash is down, Exile won't have the survivability. We saw yesterday when Senkux was playing Kassadin, he kind of just weaved around the tower on a level four dive um, and actually survived in the 1v2. Nearly picked up kills for himself as well. So Kassadin without that flash, pre-6, easier to kill. So do they camp Exile now? Nation and Synchrov, they have enough damage to get it done. And I mean, he has a decent number of deaths per game, third most, but most kills per game of all players. That number will probably go up when we incorporate <laughs> the games, uh, the, the stats from last game. But you've got to keep your eyes on this guy on any Unicorns of Love game, because he's always a part of kills, whether it's good or bad. He is in there. And he nearly broke another record in game one of this. He nearly broke his own record of most kills at 15 with uh, seven. Nearly, nearly broke it. The seventh one he got two seconds after 15. Oh, no. I thought you were so saying close. he nearly broke the 14 kill record. No, oh, like, no, was no. Like eight? no, no, no. It was a different record. Off. This is kills at 15. He's got nearly. a lot of kill related records, it turns out, as a player who gets at least five kills per game. And you gotta, you gotta think, like, half of that's gonna be like Victor games where he doesn't kill anybody for most of the game, and the other half is like Katarina games where he gets 20 kills, or, or 40, I guess, <laughs> the biggest one, 14. <laughs> Now, oh. the fight continuing. Vizichachi, there's no jungler here. Vizichachi, uh, for whatever reason, unafraid. Oh, he wants to try and kill Satorius. in. Vizichachi gonna flash. He's gonna get Satorius. Oh, that's oh, first oh, blood, Vizichachi. Sikrov's taking a ton of damage, but he does get the kill back. That's why Vizichachi was ranked number one on our statistical analysis of top laners for top lane week. Right there. There's the statistics. Trading one for one. In that's a two, how you get <laughs> in a 2v1. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. I mean, sick play. And this is something we heard from Chachi himself. He's happy to take these risks. He says, hey, you want to 2v1 me? I'll take a minute of your jungler's time. I'll kill your top laner anyway, and my team will get something else somewhere else. But for Mr. Chachi, this uh, is just... This trade started with, like, Chachi on half health and Satorius on full health. And then Satorius trades into all of these minions, oh. into the uh, rumble damage, even gets that overheat, lands an auto. Too eager. It <laughs> And that's that moment where we're like, oh, yes, visit Chachi. But if you die there, that is you being dumb as hell. <laughs> that is you making bad decisions. But visit Chachi pulls it off every time. And it's just crazy to watch. This is visit Chachi is the worst solo queue top lane model you can have because we can't do this. I mean, I don't, this man calculates on just another level. <laughs> That's very true. You're like, I'm emulating this yeah, I'm, Chachi. I'm going, okay, I'm going like... in just like Chachi would do it, guys. <laughs> my mechanics are worse. My decision making is worse. But I'm going to go in. What would Chachi do? What would Chachi do? He'd fight again. He doesn't even care. Sinkoff is right there, but the Q not going to connect. No Sonic Wave. No he's, he's fighting him back 1v2. He's still what going. this? Chachi, Sonic Wave. Chachi's just waiting. Like, if Synchrov is six here, Chachi knows that he's dead. But Synchrov's five, Satorius is five, Chachi's already six. And now Unicorns are diving bot lane at the same time. Like, Zerse, he's been spotted, I mean, they know, they know it's there. Top. He doesn't have to be scared. Look how far he's away He's just trying Kaylin to hit Peke. Fear, waiting for the exhaust to run out, leaps in on the infinite duress. Greyhound's still gonna come up, Visit Chachi oh. may be in trouble, Synchrov wants to go forward, Chachi overextends. That's a kill for Synchrov. Nice punish from OG. Uh, and, you know, we've been kind of joking about it for the last minute, like Chachi taking these, let, dare I say it, bad trades, where he's like, oh, I'm just gonna stay and fight 1v2. It finally gets punished. Synchrov stays top lane for a very long time. Chachi gets drawn into another fight, this time close to the tower. We will take another look at how it actually started. Synchrov ended up coming in to clean it up. Teleports back to the top lane. Mr. Chachi not missing out on too much. OG will have that teleport up sooner, and meanwhile, Xerxes, while he did try to force a play, does not get much. Gets the flash, gets the exhaust coming in from x -Pack a but nothing else to show for the early play. However, just like game one, so much tower pressure in the favor of Unicorns. Yeah, that Kaelin is difficult to deal with, even with the melee support. I mean, the opponents have Tom Kench. He's not very good at holding the push either, so Unicorns get a lot of freedom on this. 
and Synchrov has been spotted on that ward that is just out of tower range, so Unicorns even get the heads up. They back themselves away. Look at this now. Mid lane starting to tip a little more in favor of Exile. He's actually out farming Nathan's Jace. That shouldn't be happening. This was the exchange in top side though. Chachi pushes up under tower. And Synchrov is still around. It's an easy kill for Origin. Uh, didn't take tower aggro, but still, Chachi pushed all the way up. Very disrespectful out of the unicorns. There's a moment where we're reminded that Chachi is still mortal. <laughs> you know, he's not, he's not quite the, the faker tier escape from anything. I really to be fair, Faker does get caught though. I mean, he's not like he has his moments too. Yeah, that's Just true. Significantly less than every other player in the world. I'm actually quite surprised that Exile has turned the CS battle in his favor here. We haven't seen a lot of camping out of Zerse or anything like that, but like Jace should farm so easily pre six against this Cassidy. He should have opened up a window and. I mean, Kassadin is now very safe, but this should have been in Nakian's favor earlier on. And this CS lead, it, it, it's mostly even, right? But we expect yeah. the Jace to be stronger. However, in the top lane, Vizichachi building a massive lead for himself, despite going down. Story says two assists. It's not going to be an insane difference in gold between the two of them. Oh, 500 in the favor yeah. of Chachi. However, still just excellent play, excellent use of that early pushing power of the Rumble. And I, I want to see how Unicorns can utilize Chachi's lead as we get further into this game. We've got about a minute and a half on his teleport, so not available for any plays here. Satorius does have his oh, arrow Samus. connects. Hillisang, where's the alt? Is it gonna come out? Samus kicked under the tower. Syncroft goes in, looking for the montage moment, goes back. No acquired taste. X Peke not looking for a snack, but OG make a play on bottom side, and it's three to one in kills in favor of Origin right and now. Hillisang did not use the Cosmic Radiance, the ultimate that comes out from Tarek because he thought Samux was already safe. Now Chachi tanks the first shot of the tower. Zissi wants to go in. What can you do? Locked up. Nice flash. Out comes the ultimate. Satori set to fall, but can he get the knock up on his Zissi? He's going to get one up. back. Nice play. Unicorns really playing this riskily around the map. And Origin are coming out ahead in a lot of these exchanges because of it. Okay, that was a one for one trade, but again, it was in a one versus two. Origin, they got the kill in bot lane. Now they get the dragon. We'll see what they can do with it. Synchrom is having a much better game this time around. On this lease in, early game focus is able to have a lot of impact. And Vizichachi gets a ton of damage on the tower, but Nautilus has the TP up first. He's going to be able to come back to that lane and save it. But stress, right now, yeah, OG are feeling good, right? Yeah. They're, they're only down a tiny bit of gold. They're basically dead even. They've got a dragon, but both the top lane tower yep. and that bottom lane tower are so low. So all it takes is one kill, one small advantage for Unicorns of Love, and they're going to be able to take tower after tower. Yeah, that's the difficulty. That right there is the problem. The Origin have come out ahead on the kills on some of these trades, but Unicorns, it's all about that the damage that has already been done. They will swiftly take those two towers, and once they're down, it'll be mid lane's turn, and Nakian will have to be careful. <laughs> Chachi once again taking the trade. There's a lot of magic resist now on Satorius, so and that's not going to be as easy as it was yeah, before. Much more comfortable. Gets max range on the hook. And now Synchro, the next Becky, they're setting up for a little something. Hillisang potentially the one who's going to be in trouble. Dazzle comes out, mitigating the engage. Cersei oh. running in as well. Infinite Duress is not available quite yet, so they're running back. They're pulling back. Nahum gets decent damage down. Exiles on the side. Hillisang running for his life, trying to buy time for the team. Out goes Synchro, down goes Hillisang. OG come out on top once again, but Exile's not done. Exhaust, he doesn't care. More damage goes out. Infinite to rest, not enough. Double flash over. Nahun drops. That's Cersei with the kill. Yeah, now they're going to transition towards bot side. Tabs does not connect with the arrow. Peke's used his ult. Oh. He's going bot. They want to try and chase Samix, this. Oh, hits the trap. Nice placement from Samix. Yeah, now it's it's because Unicorns are trying to get that tower down. That's why Peke comes to the bot side. They group three people here. They sacrifice the blue buff in order to maintain this bot tower. They've got enough people to defend any kind of push. Unicorns can push back out the mid lane and keep themselves in an okay spot. Chachi recalled, he's bought himself that Leandri's Torment has TP available as well. And this is rough too, because you're the Jace, you haven't built a tier. This is all AD, Nahun wants mm -hmm. to win these fights. We don't have a blue buff, you don't have a tier, and you're giving a blue buff over to a Cassid, and that is brutal. Yeah, it's brutal, but so was this engage. Uh, I mean, Hillisang was trying to go forward, thought, okay, maybe we can take it. They don't quite realize it's basically 2v4 for a lot of the start of this fight. And Hillisang was left on his own to die in the enemy jungle. Again, Unicorn stepping over aggressive. I feel like this is because they know 
They're up against Origin. They know they can do whatever they want, and in their minds, they'll still come out ahead. I don't want to see Unicorns getting into this kind of habit against some of the stronger teams, because we just saw them make improvements against H2K. It can't get looser on this as we're heading towards playoffs. Yeah, and while we have to be concerned for, for the development of Unicorns left, yeah. their chances in playoffs, because they are looking like such a strong team. Origin, they're making great moves here in the early game, but oh, Unicorns are loved. Making some of their own. Nahan has to be careful here. He does pull back. However, Syncroft, this man, 3 0 1 on the Lee mm -hmm. Sin, making these plays in the early game. And I think if you're a team watching this from the promotion tournament, this might be a pick you just have to ban away. Yeah, I think so too. I think the Rengar looks a lot less, uh, you know, stable for Origin. Nahan's playing with fire here under this tower. Baiting, baiting, baiting. Uh, Lee Sin? <laughs> Lee Sin? All right, he came in. He didn't want to save the teammate. He wants the montage moment, but there's a creep there. It blocked ah. the shot. Yep. Does get the spike you. I feel like the unicorns are in the same kind of mindset as some of the champion designers. When they're like, these would be cool interactions. The unicorns are like, why this don't we pet great. Tarek? Well, this is not a cool interaction for Samix. He's going down, and Simcroft just making plays left, right, and center. But they're going to have to be careful. Out comes the Cosmic Radiance. Hill is saying immune to damage for now, as is Xerxes. Lead back to safety. Infinite Duress. Chachi's here. Shut down. Taps. In trouble. He no has the flash. heal. I don't think oh. he's going to make it out. Exhaust. Chachi picks it up with the Electro Harpoon. And now Peke's running. That's a fat, slow catfish, however, and a very hungry wolf. Flash over. Dazzle to stun. Where's the thick skin? Where's the extra health? It's not enough. Xerxes on a killing spree. There wasn't much duress, duress, but he was hungry like the wolf on that exchange. That was awful, I'm sorry. No, I just, just, just keep going with it. You know what? Don't backstep. You, you win. <laughs> when you commit, you just go. It, I wanted to, but it was really bad. Like, <laughs> was, that was such a reach. I'm, I'm happy that it was that bad, but we're going to have to see if Unicorns of Love have made an overstep <sighs> here. Made a bad play for themselves, but nope. Just going to retreat. They have a safe path back into the river. At some point, you've got to look at it and be like, okay, AT's pop reference is probably not going to go. Not relatable. Yeah, I don't think. It's I, like not the right demographic, yeah. right? I, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Duran Duran fans? Let us know. <laughs> we should have a poll for, for like memes and pop culture references and for how many times Synchros is going to just kill random people across the map. The answer is a lot. Yeah, and then Zerse and Hillisan come in and tidy up the 2v3. This is like one of the most painful times. Tabs has just used Flash, and then he gets equalized right on his escape route. All he can do is just walk along the equalizer and be like, this is fine. This is everything yep. I wanted from this escape plan. And then Peke gets locked down. No real escape for him either. Had enough time to make some terrible puns. There you go. You did it, though. Look at you. You made the pun. Someone out there enjoyed it, I guarantee it, and I hope that they let you know. I, I enjoyed it, Stress, don't worry. No matter what anyone else says. But for Unicorn to love, despite going even in kills, despite constant trades across the map and exile, taking some risks on positioning. Oh, Ooh, gonna have to hold that thought because Peck is coming in. Samix is locked up, but the Sonic Wave goes wide. Pillasang's still on the front lines. TP is coming in as well. Where's the Cosmic Radiance? Doesn't look like it's up, doesn't look like it's available, but Cersei's here as well. Exile coming down. He's on to tabs. He's not concerned about anybody else. The fight keeps going. Infinite duress. He's exhausted, but Exile's gonna grab one. Out comes the ace in a hole, and it's Tabs who's going to drop as well. Unicorns of love. It's just a bloodbath for this team. Oh, Unicorns, they just go diving under the tower. No real way for Origin to hold on. They were so low. I like the attempted play out of Origin. I like the start of it, but the problem is Unicorns just had enough of a reaction with this teleport on the Cassidy. Origin weren't playing into it, and now that's the second tower of the game going down. Zerse is easily able to take this Drake. Has so much health coming back on this Warwick. And unicorns can just clean up every objective left on the Rift. Unicorns of Love, once again, even. We start to get closer to 20 minutes, and this is the Unicorns of Love we expect making plays everywhere. But this is OG trying to make a play of their own, and I like it, but they just overstep a bit here. Yeah, Zerse tries to get into the fight, gets there eventually, and Synchrov gets spat right back out, doesn't quite get his way out of the fight. 
And there's just no real way the Synchro can do enough damage on his own here. Like, Tabs had hit the ult to start this fight. The follow-up came through, but Unicorns have just been too strong right now. That's a 5 and one Warwick coming at you, and there's no real way of killing him without an Ignite yeah, he, or anything like that. He's not going to do a ton of damage at this point, right? It's a Cinder Hulk and a Tia map. But yep. with Ninja Tabby, with all that extra health, there's just no one on this team. No kill him. The good news, Tabs got a Blade of the Rune King, right? He's got something to deal with the Warwick to a certain degree, but I just don't think he's going to have enough time to sit there and auto-attack uh, the Werewolf over and over and over again. And that's the problem is, if, if you wanted to put an Executioner's Calling in this build, yes, it would be 800 gold, but think about it. Like We've talked about how the, the build includes the Black Cleaver. We've seen the Hurricane come out as well. Like Those are two items that take a little bit longer. Executioner's Calling with Delay. Yeah, very true, but we saw that graphic on the bottom of the screen. We've seen a, a kind of a big shift here for Unicorns of Love and how they play the game. Star of the Split, very bloody. Coming to the middle game, uh, middle of the split, we look around IEM, and, mm -hmm. and it went downhill a bit. They were playing yeah. a much more conservative style. They're still finding wins, but Unicorns of Love, I, I'm not going to call it chaos style. Worst meme of all time. But it, what, I, what I will say is that there's so much variance in how they play games that I don't know if we always know what to expect from these early to mid games. That's fair. Um... We always have to expect Chachi being a little push forward in lane, and yep. then we can see what he can do with it. Oh no. He's actually gonna kill oh, no. Peke. He's gonna kill Peke. He's gonna he's go probably gonna kill Is Synchro. he gonna kill three people? Is he they actually locked him up. They've locked him up. They have so much CC, there's no way he's gonna get oh. another one. OG. Good play in the end, but massively risky. Exile wants to go in under the mid tower, but yeah, that was close. Is oh, this no. Hale clean it up though? Oh no. Goodbye, Tabs. Play the Rune King, it's time. Time to run. Time to run. No, oh, infinite duress. Tabs. Goodbye, my friend. You are not going to make it out of there, but Nahun just might. Satoris is there to pack oh, him up. Dazzle stun. goes in. Exile so mobile, but he gets knocked back. He gets locked up. Has to flash in the end, but he makes it out. OG just could not catch a break. Nice double stun off the Exile jump forward. This is what we're talking about. Champion designers are thinking about, okay, if we give Tarek like a paired stun with a line, maybe people will like be able to Omumu ult and oh, catch everybody. Oh, Satoris tries to hook to safety, but it's flashed in front of. Now he's locked up, but... X Becky says no. X marked the spot, but it wasn't enough to kill Satorius with the crossover. Now they want to get Peke again, but he's a Fine little too time. tanky. It's just all about the tower, though. It's, uh, <laughs> it's all about the tower. It's all about the 7k gold lead. <laughs> OG, they got the early Drake, but they got the ocean. Unicorns of Love, they get their mid-game Drake, and it's an infernal against a team that's already snowballing. That is just unfortunate. Yeah, it is. So this was the setup under the tower. You can see even with that Cosmic Radiance exile, and Hillisang able to just tank it up for as long as possible. And honestly, there's, again, they're so far ahead in this game that, like, against any even team, maybe even, like, a, a team like G2 or HK that would be able to maybe make proactive plays at the same time that worked out, Unicorns would get punished. But against an Origin who is fragmented and, and don't really seem to be on the same play pattern as each other, there's not really any kind of response that Origin are coming out with. Yeah, and the question now becomes, is this is this the same Unicorn of Love we're going to see up against a team like G2, up against a team, a team like H2K, Misfits, any of these teams make it into the playoffs? I yeah. hope not. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. No, I hope not, because it won't be an easy series if it is. And of course, hoping not to see the same level of incredible aggression, not hoping not to see a 7-1 uh, a Warwick, I'm oh, sure. Wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Uh, well, we are now at the stage of the game. 21 minutes, 7k gold lead. It, it's feeling a lot like game one. Yes, it took a little bit longer to build up that lead. Yes, OG did make moves to come back, but now it's kind of the, the unicorns of love. How cleanly can they close? For OG, they're not 100%, but, but at this stage of the game, it's nigh impossible to come back. Yeah, it realistically is. Like, if they had the come from game one, like, maybe, because you got the Shockwave, you got the Ezreal that's scaling later. They still have some presence in team fights with the Ash Arrow. If, if Synchrov can maybe somehow pick off, like, Samux if he's out on his own with no support around him, that would be the kind of thing that would delay this game later. But the Unicorns have been so good at taking fights up against the numbers that I don't really see it happening. Uh, it's, uh... And that's the issue, Stress, right? Is that when you're... When you're Origin, right, and, and you're the weaker team, we, we, we ask, say, hey, draft an early game team, find mm -hmm. wins in the early game. They found wins in the early game, but they yeah. didn't find enough. It, so if they had the late game team comp and they could get the same early game leads, maybe they'd be in a good spot, right? Or, the, or mm -hmm. match as much in the early game. But the only reason they got these leads is because of the strength of their composition, and it's just, it feels like we're at the point where there's no one right answer. 
that's very true. There, there really is no one right answer for this. Like, I, I like Synchrob's early game. I thought Synchrob actually looked pretty good on this Lee Sin. The problem now is you're up against a Rumble that has been far ahead for a lot of the game. You've got a Kassadin who's getting towards that Lich Bane point and is going to be out on that side lane with almost nobody to stop him. I don't think Nathan can contain him. Tabs will get dove and there's nothing he can really do about it if Exile wants to go aggressive. And that's a really difficult point of the game because we've seen a couple of times today these 1-3-1 one, one comps when they get ahead are almost unstoppable without really clean decision making, forcing an engage on the three members, and that's not easy in I its mean, own right. You have a 7k gold yeah. lead with a comp that can win team fights and can also 1v1 one one. One at this yeah. point in the game. It, it, there's no reliable right choice. Now, OG, they're using what basic cooldowns they have just to hold on, make sure Baron's not going to fall. But Exile's still keeping the fight going. At this stage, OG just trying to stop the bleeding, trying to do what they can. Yeah, that Lich Bane now completed as well, so Unicorns will have uh, a lot of dominance when this Cassidy starts reeling in fights. I mean, Rumble, we talk about, like, Rumble normally uh, teleports into fights, and he's a really good team fighter. Well, when he's ahead, he also just pushes the lane you can also forever, just right? Kill, I think, anyone yep. if you get close enough. And it's a similar story for Exile, but right now, Unicorns love. They gotta judge the Baron setup. Yeah. Take a look at their vision. It, it's pretty insane. Yeah. I don't think OG can see anything. They got a blue trinket and hawk shot on tabs. We'll see what Pe Peke can do. Puts a ward down. A little bit of time. Not using the blue trinket yet. A lot of this right now with why unicorns are backed away here is. Chachi had recalled from bot lane, so Chachi wasn't even creating pressure down there, which means they weren't about to force the TP out of Satorius. If Satorius is oh, under pressure, oh, no. um, then maybe he TP oh, and loses. Oh, miss. nice sidestep from Syncroft. Peke can have to flash to safety, but no one gonna drop. Which means no guarantee on the Baron, but now X-Peke is locked down, slowed up, has the thick skin, but it's just not enough. Chachi gonna grab a kill for himself, and Unicorn's a love. Maybe setting their sights on that Baron. Yeah, now they can afford to look towards it. There's a lot of that warding potential has gone. There's a trap line. Just oh no. forcing Origin back away. There's a charge he doesn't even care. Is knocked back by the Thundering Blow, though. Buys a bit of time for Nahun. Over the wall and down from the ace of the hole. Nahun drops. 25 minutes in, and the gold lead just continues to grow, grow, grow on the side of UOL. 45.8 37.9. That may just be the final nail on the top. Yeah, right now, Unicorns are able to take this Baron. Uncontested. Synchro had recalled out after that exchange, so this will go in favor. Porkshot gives them the, the vision of it. Trying to get that Ash Arrow AoE steal. The dream. The dream. The dream. Hey, I mean, we've had a Thresh Hook this week taken Baron. Is that X was... Peke going to do his best max impression? Is that what you're asking for here? Are you asking him to get a quadra kill? Something. Uh, there's some Illuminati stuff going on over there. You're telling me on Max Atlas's like first day of casting yes. in the LCK, a player in named Max not only steals Baron with a Thresh Hook, but also gets a quadra kill on Cyan. Are you kidding me? Like Illuminati. Yeah, I know, right? It's the top lane triangle. All right. <laughs> Nahan goes down, and, and yeah. at this point, that's just the pick. That's the pick yep. we expected from Unicorns of Love. Well, maybe we just expect them to start Baron, but it's really every option in the playbook is open to them at and, this stage. And that's just a fundamental play, right? You clear out the vision, someone comes in, tries to establish vision, you kill them. Like, that's just how teams control vision around Baron and this topside jungle. And it happens time after time after time, and there's no real way to play around that, apart from with the Hawk Shot with the Blue Trinket, but once both of those are gone, You've got to manually put wards in, and when you do that, that's when you're face-checking and you can't survive against this kind of lead from Unicorns. Right. And I'm really excited about this tiny interaction, and it, maybe it's a sign of how far behind OG is. Okay, are, but I'm ready. Xerxes body blocks the cannon creep. Xpeke cues to the side, knowing that he can devour said cannon creep mid-flight to stop the siege. Those are the plays the world champion makes, people. But it just unfortunately does not stop the siege in the end because Unicorns of Love now group up and are able to continue uh, to keep the ball rolling. At this point, the ball mostly rolls on its own. Yeah. It's... Uh, I, I'm just thinking, like, the next level on that play. Was there another thing Zeus they could have done? He could have flashed in to block it. For Vizichachi, he could not get caught here, but he may just be buying time. Multiple members committing. Unicorns of Love are taking towers in the meantime. Vizichachi's still alive. 
just for a moment. Will get taken down. x trying to get the rotation off into the mid lane, but Hillisang and Samus already doing so much damage. Oh, going in. Stun. It's the chain CC. x buys a bit of time, but just sets him up for the double. That's for Samix. Now Zersi goes over the wall. He's immune to damage. Exile coming in as well. They may just look for the cleanup. Satorius is done, but he's a little bit too tanky to burn down quickly. Redemption going out. They're encouraging Unicorns of Love to keep going. They're biding their time. They're hungry for blood, but they're not going to get anything else. That's the diving redemption. That tells you where you want to go if you want that heal. Under the tower, keep going. We can do this. And Unicorns of Love, double kill for Samax. As you said, it was all about taking the towers in mid and top for the Unicorns. They're so far ahead. One kill in exchange for towers was plenty for the Unicorns. And this is it, stress 56.5 to 42.0 in the gold department. Seven towers to zero on the side of OG. And this is it, our Unicorns of Love just closing out the game quick, clean. They've got the gold lead, they've got the item lead, they've got the Baron buff, they've got the inhibitors down. All that's left is to say goodnight to the Nexus. The Unicorns of Love, they're not risking anything here. No, not at all. Uh, so unicorns, they want to continue where they left off. QSS comes out, itemization is all in favor of the Unicorns. And honestly, like, Chachi dying here is, I mean, you can spend time and effort saying, oh, he's too far pushed up, but look what the team get in response. Like, they get the mid tower, they look for the inhibitor, and on the back end of it, they're able to take more fights. Like, Peke and Synchrov appear, and uh, not really anything else they can do. Unicorns are like easily Samix killed. Samix just double trap. Yeah. <laughs> and then with Tom Kench yep. died, he appeared in the exact same spot, and they both just tanked. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. There's the diving redemption. Just make sure you make it clear where you're going. All right, Stress. We're running yep. out of time in this game. Yeah. But I want to talk briefly about OG. Okay. And their chances, because they're not they're not fighting Unicorns of Love to survive nope. right now. They're fighting Unicorns of Love just to get the experience at this stage. Is this a team with this early game from Syncroft that we saw, with some of those redeeming fights, with those picks that they made on Vizichachi, is this a team that can survive in the LCS? Well, we're going to have to hold that thought. Syncroft is going in. He's getting kicked out. Now they're going invulnerable. But this is a fight pretty set to win for the Unicorns of Love. Ace in the hole. But Ooh. not going to be body blocked, because Exile is going to take him down. Samix walking forward. Satorius not oh. even going to make it over the wall. Infinite duress. They try to cancel it, but he's immune to the CC mid flight going to keep going in. The diving redemption that we talk about. Tabs is set to fall. Xerxes is godlike. Unicorns of Love, they're making it look all too easy. Exile is hungry for blood. They're going to dive the fountain. The Love Hurts crew is happy. The Love Hurts crew is proud, and they damn well should be because it's looking like the 2-0 for Unicorns of Love. An insane gold bleed. Two pretty quick snowballs to close it out. And Unicorns, they're going to take it 2-0. Unicorns maintain their spot at the top of the league for now, and 0-12 reads the scoreline for Origin in the summer, in the spring split. And you have to think, I mentioned summer split, it's looking rough right now. And if they want to stay in the summer split, they have to already fight their way through the promotion bracket. And that's an uphill battle looking at some of the strength of the teams that are going to be in that tournament. And we look at this OG lineup, this is a lot of former Challenger players ported up, brought up to the big league, could not find their mark. Now, the question is, now they have a chance for the promotion tournament. Can they make their mark there? Can they bring themselves back into the LCS, show us something new? They don't have a whole ton of time to prepare either. This is a tight schedule this year. We have that extra week of LCS. That means one less week in the season and one less week to prepare for those, those playoff situations, those promotion tournament situations. Yeah, exactly. We showed the schedule and the promotion tournament starts around the same time as quarterfinals. Like the week after week 10 of the LCS, we're only a fortnight away. And Origin have still got a lot of work to do. You look at the teams from Group A, Giants or Fnatic, depending on how the results go, will be the team in that play, uh, promotion tournament spot. Misfits Academy doing the unthinkable and beating Schalke. And Fnatic Academy face PSG on Sunday this week. Like, those are some strong teams. I'd be a little worried if I'm Origin right now, but they still have time to turn it around. They still have a couple more LCS series to cut their teeth, maybe try and get to the best point of experience they can do. But Unicorns, they don't need any more experience. They have done a fantastic job. For the promotion tournament. A lot of fans here, not just for the Unicorns of Love, but also for Peke as well. They need to get Hilly some pink Kinesio tape, or whatever it's called. Yeah, it feels like a little bit. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know you want to look like Avatar The Last Airbender, <laughs> but... 
We're, 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 all, we're all in on the pink, I'm pretty sure, at this point. I mean, they've got, like, unicorn hats. Like, Remain always has something different to wear. Like, I'm pretty sure that's doable. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Truly charming, man. Uh, but once again, for, for both these teams, it's two very different stories. Right. Unicorns love. This may be the best split that they've ever had. They have looked dominant. They're looking forward to playoffs. For OG, uh, this is one of the worst, probably the worst split they've ever had. Mm. But they are still in a promotion tournament. So both these teams moving forward to two very different scenarios, but two very important uh, tournaments for their kind of their careers. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of people would be like, oh, they made finals in their first split. Well, regular season didn't look like that. It was only winning the best of fives against like SK and the teams in playoffs all the way back in 2015 that gave Unicorns some of their craziness and their way to the final. So yeah, regular split is fantastic for them. Overall though, uh, when we look at it, there's one guy who stood out as a potential player of the series, uh, and who better? than the Hau man himself, but uh, Cersei. So Cersei, I think a bit surprising to see the Warwick coming out here overall, but it was, a, it was a good pick for him. And my question for you is, is this something that we're going to see in playoffs? Is this something we're going to see more of, or is this just a, hey, we're going to try something? I think this is more of a, hey, we're going to try something now, and, and very much like we've seen teams like Misfits do, attempting things in the run-up to playoffs. I mean, one death in two games, regardless of who your opponents are, is a good kind of basis to work from. I think the Warwick has its place. I don't necessarily think it's like first pickable or early pickable. You've got to have a good matchup for it, but Zissé looked fantastic. Yeah, exciting series. to watch nonetheless. I mean, he did still find really good engages overall. However, for more on that 2-0 win, Pyrotechnics is with Exile.